What's going on YouTube? Spoiler alert, it's Rosebud the Sled. Welcome back to the PIC Week 3 with your Kutztown Crocodiles as me, the coach of the Kutztown Crocodiles, Rosebud the Sled. Uh, we are going up against the real Judy this week. Uh, unfortunately, again, and I hate this, I really do, um, the footage, uh, Camtasia like, would start looping the footage at a point. I don't know if any of you know how to fix that because it's been really annoying. That's why I had to post calm last week too. But anyway, oh, let me just fix my mic. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> that is happening again this week. So it's going to be another post comp. But I wanted to go over the team real fast against our battle against real, the real Judy or the Denver Blitzels, who were the champs of season one. So this was a huge battle. This was really, really, I had to bring my A game for this. And um, man, it, I put up one hell of a fight. So we'll, you will definitely get to see. Please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you're interested. But uh, anyway, I want to quickly show you how hard hitting and how many wall breakers I'm bringing to this match. We have Talonflame, Lander, and Salamence. But we have um, Icarus, the Talonflame, or Icarus, the Talonflame. We have Brave Bird, uh, Flare Blitz, U Turn, and Roost, the Gale Wings, uh, and Sharp Beak, because I wanted to have the Lander's Be Choice uh, banded and the Salamence Be Choice scarfed. I just figured Sharp Beak would be the best because the main reason it was here is so that. You know, the Venusaur could never really have a chance to set up anything or do it like that'd be that reliable to switch in because Talonflame would always keep that pressure. So that's why that's here. You know, Mega Venusaur, I, I mean, it was on my team last year. I understand it's a threat. We also have Landorus Therian, or Friend Like Me, the Earthquaking, U Turning, Knockoff, and Explosioning, -ing 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 -ing, Choice Banded, Intimidating Landorus. Uh, oh my god. I love this set. Um, I, uh, the U-turn plays a big role in this battle uh, between the Talonflame and the Landorus, definitely keeping up that you know the pressure, constantly hitting him with it, uh, which is unfortunate because he has a slow bro that has regenerator, so um, it didn't do as much as I wanted it to. But at the same time, it was preventing his. Um, I don't think a slow um, the slow bro ever got to 100 HP after he initially brought it out. I just kept hitting it with U-turn. Uh, and it, you know it that, that does help. Uh, we also have that v-neck basically just for the rapid spin because You know I have a talent plate. I have a lot of flying types actually all three of my heavy hitters are flying types So I wanted the rapid spin also. I was kind of predicting an all mall though to come here um, To put up rocks and to spin them away and stuff like that. Wait, yeah All gets rapid spin I believe Maybe I think so don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure but anyway uh, I wanted to make sure that I, um, you know, I could throw away the rocks. Then King Solomon, the Choice Scarfed, Outrage, Earthquake, Flamethrower, and Iron Tail. Actually, I did the Cal Fire Fang was less than Flamethrower, so I just put the Flamethrower on there, even though he's um, attack invested and special lowering. It didn't even matter. The Flamethrower did do more, and he has a Fortress, so I had to make sure that that was at least there, just in case. We also have Yum Yum the Snorlax, who is the same set that we tried to bring first week. But uh, we didn't play it properly. I changed the IVs a little bit more in its favor here. That made it a little bit more balanced so it can take the hits that it needs to. Um, but yeah, it's a curse slacks. You've, you've seen them before. And we also have All My Wishes for Jirachi. It is actually special. It's a special variant. This guy is specifically for the Slowbro and the Venusaur. Um, preventing the Venusaur from doing Sludge Bomb was huge in my opinion. And I really needed it. Um, Psychic was great against the Venusaur. Thunderbolt is great against the, you know, the Slowbro. Wish for HP, and I wanted to put the Stealth Rocks up myself. Uh, yep, and I put leftovers. I made it. A little, I made it some especially bulky uh, for to get again those two mods. The only thing that I regret with I made this team is I actually think Water Absorb Cacturn would have been smarter against the Slowbro than the South. But, I mean, the Salmons did the do. It did do the do, as you will see. Um, but anyway, let's see how the battle actually turns out. So let's get this thing rolling. I'm actually gonna start at a normal speed first. So I, I brought out the Landorus and he brought out the Slowbro. I wanted to quickly point out that we actually started recording as soon as the servers were resetting on on uh, Pokemon Showdown, so we did the first two, the first two at like seven o'clock, and then we finished the match at like eleven o'clock at night. Uh, so, I mean, I had a lot of stuff to do that day. Uh, but anyway, I get the U-turn off. It does a sizable amount. Choice band is so good, uh, and I go into all my wishes. 
he gets the scald and that was the, the first two turns he actually i got the burn again and it, because it happened at, at first so i was actually kind of happy i got the burn even though it does suck um so he brings in the uh, he brings in the Gramble, which if I was going for Iron Head, that would have been really unfortunate. But I was going for Thunderbolt. Uh, he saw that I was a special variant. I, I think he actually really was afraid of that Jirachi. He kept talking about how it was going to wreck his team, um, and it could have, it definitely could have. But I, I didn't want it to have to serve that purpose this week. Um, so we go for the U-turn on the Talonflame, and we go into Yum Yum to soak up that Scald because we know he will. And if he gets burned, he'll rest it away. It's fine. He goes into the Al Armando the Almaldo because I, I only have Body Slam on it. Uh, kind of why I had to switch it out there. But I do get to go into Friend Like Me. I get the attack drop. He goes for the knockup though, and I lose my choice band. I only got a one choice band U turn on that. But even without the choice band, that Earthquake did a clean 50, like 53%, which was incredible. He gets his rocks up. He goes into the Slow Bro. I get an Earthquake off. And I get a U-turn off and I get to go out. 32%. If that was choice bin, I'm pretty sure that Nimty would be dead. But I wouldn't have been able to switch to U-turn, so who knows. Uh, he goes for the trick, which is really interesting. Choice Specs uh, Slowbro was really cool. Uh, so now that's a Choice Scarf Slowbro. So he's still, unfortunately, like locked into that for him. I go for the Iron Tail predicting the Gramble switch because I knew that I had Outrage and he knew I had Outrage. Um, so he has to switch out there. He goes into it. I'm locked into it. He knows I'm locked into it because it's Choice Specs Salamence now. Um, so I go into that V-neck, seeing as though this thing won't set up against me because I know it's not a setup variant because he's Choice Specs or a Choice Scarf. That I can go for a safe rapid spin, get that away. So just in case I need to bring Icarus back in, so I send that off and I go back into all my wishes, expecting a Sludge Bomb or something. Uh, he goes for a knockoff. Great play on his part. And the Jirachi does unfortunately go down. Uh, I was happy that burn happened, but man, that burn really screwed me over. I go into Icarus just to forge him, force him to switch. He goes into Slowbro as predicted, and I go for the Brave Bird uh, just to see how much it would do because um, I wanted to see like what kind of you know EVs he had on it. And I go for the U-turn, get it out of there. And I go back into the Salamence. Um, because I'm resisted, but he gets the burn, and that sucks so hard. This is why I really wish I brought the Cacturn instead of the Salamence. It would have worked a lot better. But he, um, actually, unbeknownst to me, uh, you'll see in a bit, he actually does carry the Ice Beam on it, so that wouldn't have been... The Cacturn still wouldn't have been perfect, but it definitely would have prevented him from going, getting so many burns on me. There were so many burns that he got. It was so frustrating. But anyway, I go back into Icarus, I get a U-turn off, as I actually predicted it perfectly that time. And I go into the, uh, I go into the Landorus. The knockoff, I calced it, and if I had gotten a max that would have killed, uh, it wasn't enough. I, I must have had the wrong EVs for him too, because 9%, uh, I think it was a min roll. It, it, I'm pretty sure that was a min roll, because um, the knockoff was supposed to kill, and it, it had like a good chance of killing, and it didn't. And this is where he reveals that he has the Ice Beam, and down goes Landers. And I am not looking good, guys. This is not this is not a good situation. I go into Icarus, hoping that he's not smart enough to remember for Generator, but he does. Uh, and I go for a U-turn, get him out of there. And I go into the Hitmon top. What he wasn't expecting, he was expecting a close combat, I actually have high jump kick this time. And down goes the Armando. And that was actually a huge part of my strategy. Remember when I brought in that Snorlax earlier I had to switch out because of Ar Armaldo? I can go into the Snorlax now and no one wants to take a Body Slam anymore. He's got nobody for a Body Slam. He's absolutely, and uh, he knocks out my Custop Berry, which I just put on there because I need, it has to have a different item according to League rules. I thought a, a Custop would allow me to get one more curse or something. He actually gets a crit, which is huge, but I get a rest and there goes my health all the way back up. I have one curse up so far. He goes into Mimsy. Uh, I go for the sleep talk here. And I get another curse up, which is fantastic. I need to get a, a couple curses up to make sure that I can Oko some of the stronger mons like that, um, like that Middle King. Something that he really used, he used this curse um, sleep talk set. He used it pretty well right here. He brought in the Gramble to get an Intimidate drop. Uh, I unfortunately take it down. I think he also said it had Roar, so that would have been kind of sucky for me. 
But um, he brought it in for the Intimidate drop, and then he actually brought in this. That he brought in the Slowbro earlier to get it more HP because of Regenerator. That's a good use if you're ever going up against a, um, a Snorlax. You can use the the cursing if you have like a way to get rid of the definitively have a way to get rid of the cursing. You can use that to bring up your Slowbro's HP. It was a really good use. Um, as you can see, I'm talking over this because this curse, I mean, this curse uh, sweep is going pretty well. I'm actually going to go fast here for you guys. Uh, it's going a lot better. Uh, I keep getting the sleep talk rest. I think I actually was doing a calc at one point to see how much, uh, how many I need to set up for me to kill the slow bro. Um, and I accidentally hit sleep talk twice. This was a huge misplay on my part. I should have rested here. I knew I was going to wake up and I went for the body slam. He went into the the Nidoking, King, which I think is a misplay, because uh, there's no way that a Sludge Wave would do enough. And if he went into the Amipom and got a Fake Out and some extra damage, I'm pretty sure, even though I'm at uh, times 2.5, that would have killed my Snorlax, depending on how he was invested. I'm not quite sure how he was invested. But anyway, like I think if he went into the Amipom, I might have died there. Granted, I still have a... Uh, I still have two powerful months in the back, so I don't, I'm not saying the game would have been over, but at the same time, I, it was pretty scary at that moment. Uh, luckily, I do get the rest back up, goes back up, and that pretty much seals his fate right there. There's nothing he can do to stop Snorlax, and that is how Snorlax freaking won me the game. This was insane. This was so crazy. I misused Snorlax my first week so badly that I just didn't see this coming. I really didn't. Uh, I go for a safety rest because I, I'm promised I'm not being cocky. I really didn't want to crit or anything like that. I didn't want the burn. I'm, I felt more comfortable attacking while I was asleep um, to avoid the burn. Um, but yeah, this was a crazy match. Um, man, he really brought like some powerful mons to really like keep me, you know, like keep me guessing and stuff like that. And, and well, I guess I did kind of predict his mons, maybe not the Ambipom, but um, the the slow bro Venusaur core is so crazy to, to deal with, uh, and I, 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 man, this was such a good match. It really was. I feel like I'm a, like a repeating record or a skipping record, but it was just a crazy match. I can't believe that Snorlax did this. Um, my assistant coach, you know, you know, you know him, Professor Willow, he had no faith in Snorlax. He doesn't like Snorlax. I knew I had to bring him though. I This was something that I definitely hit that veto button on because we, we tend to like agree on what we're doing, but I was like, I'm bringing the Snorlax. I'm going to make this work. And boy did it. So congratulations to Yum Yum. You are the true MVP of this week. Absolutely, five kills. I actually think that puts him on the scoreboard for like the M the MVP of the league. I think he's definitely up there now, which is huge because all my moms are like, you know, I think like the max one, like they have like two or three kills or something like that. But now he has five from only two matches, which is awesome. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm so happy to have a 2 0 team right or a 2 and 1 team right now. Uh, and you know, next week I'm going up against the Dallas Armanitans. So that's my boy Nate, Nate Dog plays, and I'm excited to, to take him on. Uh, Real Judy, you're a better battler than me. I know it. But um, I know I can bring good teams. I, I, I was really prepared. That's my strong suit. I'm not a good battler. I can prepare teams pretty well. And um, and I got, you're a way better battler than me. You're a great team builder as well. You are, you deserve that, that first win. I'm just happy that I could, you know, I could do something to even like challenge you. And I can't wait to battle you again, dude, because you are, you blow me away as a battler. Sorry to have a little bit one-on-one -on -one with him. I just wanted to make sure that he knew that. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Like I said earlier, subscribe, hit that like button. You know all that shit. It really helps me, and I love hearing your comments in the. Co uh, I love hearing your comments in the comment section, specifically with battle stuff, because like I was talking about, I'm not a good battler. I'm just a pretty good team builder. Um, anyway, I'll see y'all later. Stay.